What I'm going to quickly do is uh, break apart one of the questions, in, I think this is like 6C or something like that, and then I'm going to ask you to pick your pens back up in a different space and I'm going to show you what's going on with this, why this limit actually ends up being important. It is neither the pure nor the applied problems that we're really looking at today that are the point of this exercise. Okay? So first one, just this guy here. Um, one of the reasons why questions often get given in particular ways is to see if people will make a very common mistake um, because you know they're like, oh, I know this technique, I, I know this limit, right? So I can use it all the time, and it's a handy thing, right? Whenever I see a theta on a sine theta, I know what to do with that. Now, this is a limit with a very simple answer, okay? But it's got this has been given in multiple choice questions before, and I know like the distractor that people are thinking of is, oh, I know what to do with this theta on theta squared on sine squared. Right? This, like, this part's going to be 1, and then they're going to say, oh, it's 1 over 1 minus, wait, hold on a second, and then they're in some trouble and they break apart their denominator, which you can't do, and then they end up in some trouble, right? We forget that with limits, we can do all the things that normal limits do. The reason why we usually do algebraic tomfoolery to rearrange things is because you can't simply evaluate the denominator. You get a 0 in the denominator, that's a big problem, right? But once you have a look at this guy, right? Sine theta, as theta approaches zero, we know that sine theta also approaches zero. But that doesn't make the denominator zero, does it? Right? So in this case, I'm just looking for a simple evaluation of, and by the way, this is actually what you would write. Don't just go straight to the answer. I'd say that top's going to be zero. I evaluate that. And this is one take away the zero that comes from that sine squared. This line is actually really important. It doesn't look like it's much because it's all zeros and ones, but it shows that I understand what this limit means and that I can just evaluate it. And that's why it's simply equal to zero. Okay? So don't be fooled by ones that look more complicated than they really are. Sometimes you can just use a trig identity to expand stuff out and cancel and everything's nice. Okay. Pick up your pen again and if you're still like big questions or something like that, go somewhere else, find like a new column or a new page or whatever. Because this is the real point. Now, I'm not going to prove this entire result for you. I'm just going to get up to the point at which this result we've proved ends up being like, aha, this is why we spent so much effort drawing diagrams and stuff like that. When we first learned how to differentiate things, when we first learned calculus, we didn't know how to do anything. So we just said calculus is all about gradient. It's all about the gradient function. And the gradient is just rise over run. Rise over run in a particular case where run is like, well, when the run is zero, right? And that's why we had to bring in limits and all that kind of thing. So when you look at something like this, again, we're going to go back to first principles. Now remember, by first principles, can you quote it to me at this point, right? F dash is going to be equal to, I'll start you off, there's a limit. That's the part everyone forgets. And then what happens after that? What am I getting on the top? I've got a, a, a fraction, right? And on the top I'm going to get, come on, tell me, F of? x plus h, thank you very much, minus f of x, and then what's on our denominator? h, very good. And this is just the rise over run that we get from the gradient function, right? Now in this case, and this is the part we're going to need to um, work together, in this case my f is just sine. So this is what I get. The limit as h approaches 0 of sine of x plus h, that's just my f of x plus h, minus what? Minus sine. And then on the denominator, it's still just my, just my h. There's nothing there. Okay? Now, what do we do with this? Well, what's the only thing at your stage of knowledge that you can do to try and simplify this? Have a look. There's not much you can do here. You can't do much with the denominator. You can't do much with this guy. What are you going to do with this? Can you just give me the expansion for this, right? Okay, come on, right along with me. Uh, again, write the limit. What is the expansion for sine of x plus h? Is it still there kicking around in your brain? What do you got for me? It starts with a sine, right? Sine of what? Sine x. Cos h. Very good. See, it is still there. And what's the other part of the expansion? Uh, yeah, you can do sine h cos x. We tend to write them in order of angles, so I'm just going to write, not that it matters, but I'm just going to write in order of x and then h because that's the order I did before. So there's the expansion. Take away sine x and that's all divided by h. What a mess, okay? Now, in order to work with this thing, I, want, I noticed that a whole lot of these have x's in them. And remember, as we've seen before, when you have things which are independent of the limit, this is an h limit, right? All these x things are kind of irrelevant to the limit, right? Sine x doesn't care what h is, sine x is still sine x. So what I want to do is seek to write this in such a way that I can pull out those x parts and then just leave the limit in terms of all the h's, right? So what can I do here? 
Hmm. Well, I notice in my three terms, two of them have a sign x and the other one has a cos x, right? So I'm going to try and group them together a little bit. So I'm going to do a big fat bracket here. I've got sine x cos h minus sine x. So I've just paired up my, brought together my sine terms. That's all over h. And then I also have this other guy over here which has cos x instead. Good morning. Never seen a math teacher before school, obviously. Okay, uh, cos x and then there's a sine h over h. Are you starting to get suspicious at this point? Is it, is it clicking yet? Now, I've got a sum of limits. The sum of limits is the limit, sorry, start again. I've got the limit of a sum. The limit of a sum is the sum of the limits, so I'm gonna break this apart into two. And whilst I do that, I'm also going to factorize out all those x terms. They're completely irrelevant to the limit. So in this case here, I'm gonna factor out the sine x, gonna bring it out the front. Then I've got the limit, and what's remaining in that limit after I factorize out? What have I got on that numerator? Cos, cos h, right? Cos h. Take away what? I've factorized out, so I've just got one there. That's all divided by h. Sorry, that's a messy h. So there's my first limit. And then I've got this guy over here, cos x. I've factorized him out because he's irrelevant to the limit of, here comes the limit now. What's left inside the limit? Something that should look really familiar to you, right? It's just sine h over h. Now I'm just going to hit pause right there. A number of you will already actually know what you're supposed to get out the bottom, okay? Uh, that's actually really important to me because therefore you should know what happens with all of this. We're not quite out of the woods yet. This part's going to be equal to, of course, what if we just spent proving? This part's 1, so you'll get this guy, right? Cos x multiplied by 1. Now if you know where this final answer should go, therefore you know that this whole piece here should equal... It should equal zero. Now, like I said, we're not quite out of the woods yet. This guy here, I invite you to have a little think about. It's its own little sort of problem. But the main problem was this guy, which we have just proved how you can deal with, okay? And then once you open the door to that, once you know the derivative of sine, cos is just the complement of that, tan is just the ratio of those, and then you get everything in this entire universe of tans and sec and cosec and all that kind of thing for fun, okay?